Hi. Today is election day in the U.S. All three of the Penumbra contests will be open until the end of the day on November 8th, so if you haven't already entered, I hope you will. Today is your chance to make a difference, so please, get out and vote. Ah, good evening, traveler. And welcome to the Penumbra. Take your seat, please. Take your seat. The junction lies ahead, so if you'll allow me just a moment. We are now passing through Newtown. Our next stop, Juno Steel and the Man of the Future. out there. Wind gets nuts on the 14th floor. Is it done yet, Rita? You've asked me that like a billion times, Mr. Steele. I'll tell you when it's done. <laughs> Listen, guys, I don't even remember how we got here, really, but this is starting to move on over from prank. I don't really get. It's a pretty rude thing to do to your host. I thought you said it was easy to hack these things. You got through the Thea back in O'Flaherty's office in 15 minutes. Well, it's hotter than that, all right? It's all... Ah, that, those things back there were real basic puppets, but this thing... This thing... It's like... It's like what? I don't know. It just keeps adapting to something. Like, like, I just gotta focus, all right? I ain't never done anything like this before. I mean, it feels rude anyway. But maybe that's me. I mean, I guess it's not like I've even had a place to host people very long, so I haven't exactly picked up the rules yet. Hey, JJ! You shut up! Just, please, shut up. It had been that way for hours. Rita and I standing out on the 14th floor Newtown balcony listening to that jabber at us. Nothing to distract me except the cold bite of wind, the long way to the ground, and Newtown. Beautiful blue and silver and pink Newtown, tall and strong and completely unrecognizable. My name's Juno Steele. I grew up here, and I did most of that growing up next to my best friend in the world, Mick Mercury. Wait. Did I break some kind of host rule? Was I supposed to serve some food or, like, prep a skit or something? Ah, phew. This hosting thing is a lot harder than it looks. And I don't know what that thing is in there, moving Mick's limbs, using Mick's voice, but it's not Mick Mercury. If you guys want a pizza, I could run out and grab one. There's this great spot next block over with an amazing squid ink crust and some spicy synth sauce and stuff, man. Jay, it's just like some of the za we stuffed ourselves with when we were kids. Except when you're done, you don't barf all over my dad. I can't do this, Rita. If I have to listen to him for two more minutes, I swear. This is going to take as long as it's going to take, boss. What do you want from me? Let's just... Let's just rip the goddamn chip off him already. Mr. Steel, we can't do what? that! What, because he's strong? Listen, it's easy. I'll just get him with the stun a few more times. Boss! Then wait for the chip to start his heart again, and then rip it off. Skid grafts cost nothing these days, plus I've got 10 stamps on my quick med card and the 11 treatments free. I ain't worried about his skin. We can't just pull the Thea soul off of him. She's, uh, actually right about that, Jay. Why the hell not? It's just like your old cyber eye, boss. That chip's worked into Mr. Mercury's brain now. It ain't doing it as fast or as deep as the eye, but it's still in there. And if we just rip it off, it'd be like ripping off part of his brain. We'd scramble him. Oh, what the hell? He's scrambled already. Who cares? Mr. Steel. No, Rita. I actually think JJ's onto something. Did I ask? Without the Thea soul, my life was pretty scrambled. It's not worth trying to pretend it wasn't. I couldn't hold a job. Couldn't take care of myself. You shut up, Thea. Whatever you are, nobody talks about Mick that way. Except you? You talk about me that way all the time, Juno. Talked, I guess. <laughs> The pay it just helps us all. Gives you more control over your life. And hey, I mean, are you really going to stand there and tell me that Mick Mercury didn't need a little more structure in his life? Don't talk about him. I know Mick. You aren't Mick. Then who is? All the Thea Soul does is take control when I get out of control. Grab the wheel when I'm about to run myself into a ditch, metaphorically speaking. Except when it's literally speaking. Like yesterday, I got distracted by all the pizza I just dropped on my lap while I was driving. And... You tried to jump us. You call that under control? You're just... 
I don't know. You just always talk circles around me. I figured you'd talk me into a bad spot again. A or... bad spot? Me? After all the times I've scraped you off the sidewalk, Mercury, you're really going to stand there and tell me that you were worried I was going to put you in a bad spot? Mr. Steele. What? I'm almost done, okay? It's almost done. <sighs> right. Right. Almost done. Thanks, Rita. No problem, boss. Fine, gloat all you want. Use his voice to torture me just like you use my brain, but we're gonna beat you, you little metal nightmare, and when we do, you're... Mr. Steele? Where'd he go? I don't know. Mr. Steele! What was that? What was that? Just sit still, all right? I'm trying to figure that out. Get inside. Well, do I stay still or do I get inside, boss? Because this is real Now! For your own safety, please do not move. I knew what the Thea could do. I lived through what the Thea could do, but this thing... It was coming from above. It was climbing straight down the wall like a spider. Its limbs, mix, arms, and legs, I mean. They were moving so fast they looked sped up. Their motions were quick, efficient, unreal. I reached for my gun, but I knew I couldn't use it. Mick's odds of falling onto the balcony were low, and for all my big talk, I couldn't stun him again. I couldn't hurt him that way, even if the chip was going to restart his heart. So Rita and I started pulling apart our barricade. He's coming down real fast, boss! Throw the chairs off the balcony if you have to, just move. Hey, come on, buddy, you're really going to trash my new place? That's the last one! Come on! Ah! Ah! Lock it, boss, lock it! There. Step back. We don't know what it's going to try next. He, uh, he doesn't look like he's trying to do anything besides sitting there. It doesn't, does it? Well, you were right, Mr. Steele. I didn't know that's what he was going to try next. I'm not going to try anything. We're just having a conversation. You call that a conversation? It was one. Then Rita convinced you it wasn't worth talking to me. That you should just wait until she was done. And if you aren't willing to talk to you now, why should I bother? And so long as you don't want to bother, you'll keep going after us. <sighs> Just a few more minutes, boss. Fine. Fine, Mick. Let's talk. Hey, that's great to hear, JJ. Just open on up and I'll... Through the window. Sure, we can start this way. Hey, while we're talking, do you want to know why I don't just punch straight through this glass here and grab you two right now? Because I think you know I could. Sure, Mercury. Why don't you break down your own door and attack us? Because that would be dangerous. Huh? Huh? Let's see what I'm talking about. Same idea as the pizza on the lap while I was driving thing. Just because you can do something doesn't always mean you should, you know? And the Thea keeps you from doing things it thinks you shouldn't. Like any good dictator. No, 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 no. Come on, buddy. It's not like that. It's all about protecting you from things you might regret later. Like... I'm gonna get hungry while driving sometimes, and it's not like I deserve death or a neck brace or whatever just because I got hungry while I was driving, right? Too harsh. So the Thayer protects me from my bad choices. Easy. It doesn't protect you from everything yet, but it's pretty good. That pizza was real, real hot. I've got this big burn right on my... Actually, maybe you could look at it. But dive bombing us on your rickety balcony is safe. I knew we were safe because I know this town. I know how everything was built, and I know what it can take. See? Soul makes me smarter, too. There are a lot of different types of smart, Mick. You had some of them in spades. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, maybe that's true. I don't know. But even smart people make mistakes. Like riding a busted-up old hover cycle. Could have killed me. You loved that bike, Mick. Sure, but do you know what the fatality rates on those things are? I was a dead man on two wheels, Jay. And a hover cycle's supposed to have three. You knew that. You knew the risks, and you could have stopped riding your hover cycle anytime you wanted to. Could I? You really think that anytime you wanted to is the problem, I think. Is wanting to a good enough reason to do something, Jay? Because I didn't really want to stop drinking either. What? You asked me where the booze in my apartment was, and you were right. I do like a drink. But there's a line between a hobby and can't stop, you know? And I'm just saying... Uh, let's not talk about it, actually. I... I, I didn't know. 
God, Mercury, I swear if I knew... All the soul does is take over when I can't do it anymore. That's it. And you know how hard it is to quit things that are bad for you or do them less or anything like that. You pull and pull and pull away from whatever you want as hard as you can for so, so long. And then you have one moment of weakness. Just one. And then the want gets so big or just... You feel so low that the cycle starts again and you're back to square one. You can't stop those weak moments from happening, right? They're inevitable. And if they're inevitable, can you really say they're your fault when they happen? Really? No. No, I guess not. That's all the soul does, Jay. It takes over when I have a weak moment. Are you trying to say that isn't good? No. No, of course that's good. It's... It's amazing, Mercury. It is. It's really amazing. And Jay, I think... I think a soul could really help you, too. What? Mr. Steele, I don't think you hey, should... Hey, you too, Rita. We're just talking, right? Talking never hurt anybody. Right, JJ? Sure. Just talking. Or else. What was that? Nothing. No. No. Hell no. I'm sorry you had problems I didn't know about, Mercury, but... I don't need that goddamn thing, alright? I'm clean. I have a drink every now and again and again, but I can handle it. And I'm not putting any of that garbage in my body that I used to. I kicked it on my own. You did? And that's super awesome, Jay. That's amazing. And you know I'm proud of you, but... Are you sure that means you've kicked it forever? I... I... One week day. That's all I'm saying, Jay. Your punishment for one week day could be to lose 15 years of progress. You could go back to feeling how you did after you were booted out of the HCPD. You might feel fine now, but... He wouldn't! You don't have to listen to him, Mr. Steele. You're better than that now in a million ways, and I wouldn't let you anyway! You know how quickly fine changes. And you know how quickly the people you rely on start disappearing when you hit that point. Diamond? Mr. Mercury! Even Sasha, kinda. And your old partner on the force, what was their name? Puck. Puck Falco, that's right. Where are they now? I don't know, we fell out of touch. Heard that one before, am I right? Mr. Steele, this is all wrong. Diamond was gone before you left the HCPD, and Detective Falco just transferred to another planet, and- Rita, stop. But Mr. Steele, this ain't just a- I'm trying to think, all right? Would you stop? It's a lot to think about. You two, just shut up, both of you, all right? This isn't what I thought this would be. What the hell is this? God damn it, Ramsey's goddamn city of the future. What the hell? You gotta admit, O'Flaherty makes a few good points. Heart's in the right place, too. He cares a lot. Sometimes I feel like that's his problem, Mick. Sometimes I feel like this whole goddamn horror show is just what happens when somebody who wants to make things better finally gets the power to do it. And if that's true, then what the hell are we trying for? And now I- shh, shh, shh. Come on, buddy. It's all right. It's pretty simple when you break it down. What's up, Rita? Got something to say? <clears throat> hey, all right. You do you. And you, Jay. I'm just saying that you should be able to hang on to how well you're doing now that you earned it. You shouldn't lose it because of a few bad choices at the end of a bad day. And you shouldn't lose the people who are keeping you feeling so well in the first place. Keeping me well? What does that mean? <laughs> Come on, you don't think you made this much progress on your own, do you? No. I finally figured that out anyway. And so without those people... Yeah, probably shouldn't dwell on it, right? Better to just make sure it never happens. Never another big blow-up where you push somebody away. Never another bender. Never! And with the Thea soul... You could rest easy. You could know you were never going to hit the self-destruct button on your own life, you know? Never destroy my own life. Seal it up and know that it's safe. Forget the daily struggle of being healthy or halfway decent and just... Let the soul carry you through it. The thought made me feel sick. But Mercury, Ramses, those smiling people outside, they all seem so goddamn certain. And when I looked into myself and I saw that most of all I was just scared. Scared of what the Thea Spectrum made me do, scared of everything I had to do to get rid of it, and just plain scared. I felt old. Railing against a future people needed. 
Because isn't that always how one era looks at the next? With fear that the life they learn to live is gone, whether or not the new life rumbling in the horizon is better. Juno? Rita. Rita. Stop. I can talk in just a sec, boss. I found a way in and I'm almost done. No, I mean, stop trying to disconnect the Thea. It's over. We're done here. What? But... But Mr. Mercury... Isn't who we're looking for. What are we going to do, Rita? Bring Ramsey's a functional adult and tell him he's too functional now? But you said this ain't like him! This is better, Rita. He likes it. He's happy and safe. What the hell else matters? But... Just delete everything you've been working on, please, before I change my mind. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Um. Mick, buddy, I just don't get it. Everyone here has been talking circles around me, and I can't come up with a single coherent thing to say, which must mean I'm wrong, I guess. So what are you going to do about it? I don't... I can't put one of those things on me. Not yet. I need to think about it some more. Second-guessing the choice you know is right just lets you make bad decisions, JJ. We both know that. I know. I just feel... hopeless. (sighs) Back in the day, you always had something for me when I felt hopeless, Mick. A story or something, and... Boy, I need one, because right now I can't tell where we're heading or where we're supposed to be. I'm lost, Mick. I'm so goddamn lost. Those old stories? About perfect cities and resort planets we'd all moved to when we grew up and that kind of thing? I can't, Jay. I'm sorry, but they're too... Dangerous? Yeah. Kind of. All they do is make us want something that's not good for us. So what's the point of imagining somewhere else when this is the most we could ask for, you know? Don't need to tell stories, don't need booze, and don't need your bike. Hell, maybe you're right. Maybe they're all just dangerous, and maybe wanting them's the real problem. But I'm still going to think about it before I get one of those things on me. I have to, all right? Rita, let's go. Sure thing, boss. But what if he, you know, jumps at us while we're leaving? We hear the glass door shatter. I'll keep the blaster ready just in case, and I don't think he will. Scout's on her, buddy. <laughs> Rita, what are you doing on your comms? Uh, nothing. Rita. Boss? No, we're not playing this game, all right? This ain't a game, I'm trying to tell I you. asked you to delete. Mr. Mercury's gone. He's, what? There was nobody on the balcony. I looked away for barely a second, just to see Rita's comms, and then... There was nobody on the balcony. Boss, where do you think... (laughs) Ah! (coughs) Mr. Steele! He came flying through the door like he'd been thrown through it. But when his shoulder hit my chest, he twisted in midair and wrapped his arms and legs around me, his whole body a grasping claw on a huge, invisible arm. I felt the soul in his hands, its teeth were scratching down my arm, and... I knew I'd been one twitch away from the thing latching onto me. Then he was on top of me, and I was on the ground, and before I knew what was happening, Mick's hand was a foot from my face, holding that little chip so close I thought I saw it squirm. Both my hands were around his wrist, holding him back, but I was losing ground quickly. You know this is the right choice. Don't let yourself make another mistake. Give up control. I knew he was stronger than me. I knew I couldn't keep this up, but whenever I tried to think of some way out of it, I just got stuck over and over again on trying to make the day's pieces stick together. How fast he'd move up the outside wall and through a window and down the stairs to us, how together he seemed, how good his offer sounded. To just let go, give your ability to ruin your own life away to somebody else and never worry about whether you can take care of yourself again. Give up! I do not not want to hurt you, user Juno Steel. Give up control to the Thea soul. Years ago, Jack Takano said that even once we discover our home, the place humanity can really be happiest, we probably wouldn't recognize it. And if you want to know the truth, that's what I couldn't get out of my head. The thought that maybe this blank-faced 
thing on top of me was the best way forward. And if never making another mistake again scared me, maybe that was something wrong with me. I couldn't hold it at bay. And that chip in its fingers was coming closer and closer. And in the end, I lost. Give up! But that doesn't mean the Thea won. What the hell? boss. You don't gotta... I, I already deactivated it, Mr. Steel. It ain't gonna hurt any... One. How does Mick look? His heart's okay, but he's sweating a lot, and he looks real tired, and... He's got bruises all up and down his legs, Mr. Steel. His arms, too. Moving that fast must have tore every muscle he's got. And there's no Thea to help him shake it off anymore. Not exactly helping the crushing guilt, but here we are, I guess. Mr. Steele? I... 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 Don't say it. I'm so sorry, boss. I know you told me to stop hacking into your best friend and delete all the stuff I did already, but he was just really spooking me, so I made the comms do a poop, and that wasn't even the delete sound, by the way, which made me so nervous you'd find out, but anyway, I should have listened. I know Rita, I should no, please. You were right. You saved me, and besides... Why the hell am I telling you what to do? You're in danger, too, and... It's not like we're getting paid for this, so why the hell am I your boss? Huh? I'm still looking at this like it's all about me and... Him. Ramses pulls me in for a one-on-one conversation. I tell him it's not personal, and then... What do I do? I act like this is a... I don't know, a duel. Just me and him squaring off, but... You live in this city. This is just as much your fight as anybody else's. <laughs> I-, I told you I'd change. Hell of a lot that was worth. Maybe the Thea was onto something. One bad choice and all your progress is gone. <sighs> Maybe the reason it was so terrifying was because it was right. No, Mr. Steele. I think it was probably scary because it brainwashed your best friend and then threw him through a door at you. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And besides, boss? <clears throat> <clears throat> I ain't going nowhere. Uh, thanks, Rita. Even if you ain't the boss right now, I'm still gonna call you boss, though. What? Why? Because I almost never use your first name, and every time I do, I want to throw up a little bit. So what? Am I supposed to call you... No, no, please, Rita, it's good, thank you! Now let's get Mr. Mercury into bed, boss, and then let's get a whole bunch of painkillers into Mr. Mercury. He's, uh, gonna need him, I think. Mick woke up for a few seconds before I left. I was grateful for that. I... needed to hear him. <coughs> Mr. Steele! Mm-hmm. Hey there. Fancy seeing you two. Ah. Hold on, Mercury. Take it easy. You, you had an accident, but it's gonna be okay. Ah, oh, come on. Don't kid me, Juno. I remember what I did. All of it. I don't think you did all that, Mr. Mercury. He didn't. You didn't. It was that... thing. You know, I let them put it on me. Didn't even fight it. They said it was an IT tag or something, and I didn't even... So they lied to you about it? No, not exactly. Just said it would make our lives easier. To be fair, this is a pretty cool apartment. (laughs) So you liked it, then? You wanted to keep that chip on you? Liked beating the hell out of you? Liked saying all that junk? No, Jay, come on. Or at least, I definitely don't like them now. But you were fine with them then. You felt good then. I don't know about good. It just felt easy. (laughs) Like nothing really mattered. Nothing really... Boss? Hmm? It's almost time for your talk with Meryl Flaherty. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. Good luck, Mr. Steele. I didn't want to do it alone, but Rita had convinced me it was too much of a threat to leave Mick behind unguarded. She could at least keep a stranglehold on the apartment's systems, keep the neighbors away for a while. Meanwhile, I had to walk down those darkening streets alone, a dead Thea soul taped to the back of my neck, weaving through crowds of happy people on their happy ways. No. No, it, it wasn't just that they were happy. That'd be too easy. An army of mindless, smiling zombies was something I could get Ramses to see the problem with. It was the equation they implied. Because the Thea took control away from Mick, sure, but... How much was control actually worth? If you put it at one end of the scale and on the other end you put happiness, balance, the cure-all for addictions and mistakes and heart attacks and everything else, how much does control actually matter? If we just use freedom to hurt ourselves, is it really as valuable as we think it is? And I might have kept thinking that way if a chill in my bones didn't make me stop dead in my tracks on a quiet little side street. I didn't recognize a single building there, and yet, somehow, I knew. From the shape of the ground, from the stars that hung directly overhead, from whatever force in your gut tells you what the shape of the world looks like, I knew that I was standing directly in front of the old town apartment where my family lived for years. There wasn't an apartment building there anymore, it was a park now. A tiny one, nestled in the shadows between two buildings. And it was beautiful, with a path down the middle, with flowers and small fountains on either side, but what stood out most about it was a statue at the end of the path, standing tall and proud in chain mail, grinning devil-may-care at the stars. I read the inscription on the statue's base out loud. Welcome... Home. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> Ramses, you idiot, this thing is beautiful. <laughs> Mom would have hated it. <laughs> God, she would have hated it. Seeing Andromeda looking so cocky looking like the battle was over, that she'd made it back to Polaris and now everyone was just going to live happily ever after. (laughs) It it was ridiculous. A grand gesture at nothing, to nobody, for no reason, just an old man thinking some fountains and flowers could band-aid three ruined lives, thinking you can make deserved guilt go away by throwing money at it. And all at once I found Ramsey's O'Flaherty slash Jack Takano slash whoever he was before that so goddamn funny it made me want to cry. So, I cried. Because he wasn't some divine arbiter of good like he thought he was, like I hoped he was. He was just a person. Just a ridiculous man with enough money to run away from every problem except his guilt. A blundering giant who tripped and tumbled from life to life, but who crushed the people below him with every fall. And then I knew what I was going to say to Ramsey's O'Flaherty. I'll beat you, goddammit, you self-righteous old moron. I'll beat you. Because that was Ramsey's problem. He thought he knew better than everybody else, that... When people hurt themselves, it was because they hadn't listened to him. He decided Sarah Steele couldn't handle North Star on her own, so he took it. He decided I couldn't be trusted with my own body, so he took it. He decided that every resident of Hyperion City had their chance to make their home better, and they'd blown it. So he took the city, too. But it never worked. None of the people he'd ever helped had stayed helped, because you can't force someone else into it. Because getting better is always on you. It has to be. And that doesn't mean you're alone. It doesn't mean you can't lean on others when you get tired or ask for directions when you get lost. But getting better is a long road. And if you want to go down it, you have to start walking. 
That's what I was going to tell him. I wasn't going to back down, and I wouldn't give in until he stopped, until he finally left people alone for the first time in his goddamn life. That's what I was going to tell Ramses. If we'd ever had that last talk, he promised me. Ramses, I've been waiting outside for 15 minutes. Where the hell... Ramses? Ramses? Come on, O'Flaherty, snap out of it. Ramses! But Ramses O'Flaherty was dead. Lying face down in a pile of papers. A half-packed suitcase on the floor beside him. Ah, Wake up, you coward! You can't be dead. God damn it, Jack, I am not finished with you yet. I investigated the body. I had to know. If I was never going to get my last words with him, I had to know who had taken that away from me. I wanted to find them. To hurt them. I could taste it like hot yellow bile in my throat. There was no sign of struggle. Some scuff marks on the floor that suggested kicking, but nothing big. No wounds or fingerprints. No footprints but my own. Nothing. So... For a while, I was convinced it was poison. So convinced, I could hear it sizzling in his veins, but goddammit, I couldn't find a drop, a needle mark, even a cup or a piece of food it could have been given to him in. And I couldn't find a single symptom of a toxin I knew. Nothing. Nothing. When someone dies unexpectedly, you start looking for answers. For reasons. Not to how necessarily, but... Why, I guess. In some imaginary, cosmic way. So, I started looking through his papers. Eventually, I found medical records, prescriptions, all that kind of thing. Heart condition. He'd already lasted longer than the doctors estimated. His notes made it sound like he planned to last forever. He was thinking of telling me about his medical problems. I know because of what he was writing at that desk. Our conversation. Hundreds and hundreds of versions of it written out in rushed handwriting, predicting everything I might say and preparing himself for every path our debate could have taken. It's just what they call a bum ticker, do you know? A quirk like this bum ticker here. It's been on its last legs for almost 40 years now, but it's never stopped, and I don't see why I should either. That got the fireworks up in me all over again, and for a white-hot moment of relief, I knew, knew that someone had murdered him, because the Thea soul could restart hearts. So he must have put one on himself. He must have. So I checked, to be sure. But Ramses didn't have a soul. He just died, alone, in the city of his own design. I spent a long time reading his notes. How couldn't I? It was the closest thing I'd ever get to winning or to goodbye. Some versions showed O'Flaherty still hadn't given up on me. (laughs) Excellent, excellent, you know. I'm so glad to have you on board, my friend. You're going to be incredible. A legend. I'm certain of it. And that he probably never would have bent, no matter what I said to him. The Thea soul is not a brainwashing device in any way, except for the most literal interpretation of those two words. It does not wipe the mind. It cleans it. Removes the detritus of spite and addiction and impatience and greed. We wash our bodies to clean us of parasites that mean us harm every day. Why shouldn't we wash our minds of parasitic thoughts the same way? But the thing I couldn't ignore about those notes was how many there were. 
How many of his planned out conversations ended in dead ends, bad points crossed out so viciously he'd torn through the pages? Your mother! Do not lie to me! The town's worked. It's working, and I don't know what you think you saw. I spent a while trying to understand which of these notes, which of these planned conversations showed the real Ramsey's O'Flaherty. Like each sliding piece of paper on his desk was a mask, and one of, one of them had to be his real face. His points weren't consistent. He kept contradicting himself, so... Which one did he mean? But in the end, maybe that's who Ramsey's O'Flaherty was. What a person is. A pile of masks assembled in blind panic. And even if you dug past all those masks to find what lay beneath, would there even be anyone down there? How did we end up here, Juno? I can't make sense of it. No matter how hard I try, how is it possible that we... The two people in the galaxy whose compass for good I most respect are at odds when there's so much evil, so much suffering across the world. How have you and I ended up on opposite ends of the battlefield? It feels so wrong, like there's a tear in the essential fabric that connects us, like I've taken a wrong turn somewhere. I've felt this way before, but only in my darkest moments, because the guilt, it's childish to assume that doing good things must feel good, that we must have something inside us that gives us treats when we're good and punishes us when we're naughty. But even all these years later, it isn't the charities that jump out at me, the good causes, the soup kitchens. It's the failures. Your mother and you and Ben Zaiten and faces before those guilt, you know, it will eat you alive. It lays its eggs in you, it claws and bites from within, and it grows, you know. No matter what I do, it grows and grows and grows. When I saw you were the P.I. investigating one of my real estate ventures, it felt like a blessing, like my chance to do good again. That with you, with Newtown, that guilt might finally be sated. Yet here we are, and still... It gnaws on my stomach. Newtown must work. It has to work. Please, Juno, tell me how to make it work. Because if I can't pay that debt in guilt, if I can't feel for once like the good I've done finally outweighs the suffering. I never got to know what would happen if that was true, because that was the last word Ramses wrote before he died. Did he mean any of it? I don't know. I don't even know what he meant for that slip of paper to be, a closing statement or a suicide note or a message goodbye so he could finish packing his briefcase and run away all over again. I'd never know. So maybe all I've really said has been about me, that presented with a pile of masks, I chose that one to hold on to. I didn't know. I don't know. I sat there for a long time. The only thing that got me moving again was a comms call from Rita. I should have updated her earlier, but at the time, I... I guess I felt like the clock had stopped. Mr. Steele? Mr. Steele, are you okay? I'm... Yeah, I I think so, but 
Rita, this is just so... Honestly, I'm very glad you're okay and everything, but we can talk about how dead you ain't later. You gotta turn on a new stream right now. What? Turn it on! Or make Meryl Flaherty turn it on! We're running out of time, boss! So I found Ramsey's monitor and turned it on. I didn't need to ask what new stream Rita meant. The message was on all of them. And so Old Town has spoken. Or perhaps we should say New Town. In case you missed it, here's the footage of the moment in question one more time. Citizens of Hyperion City, the way home is nearly ready. In 24 hours, Newtown will part its gates to you. No way. Did Mayor Flaherty not listen to you? Did he activate it while you were talking to him? What's going on? I don't know, Rita. I, I don't know. Find a safe place to hide Mick and meet me at the mayor's office. We'll take care of this. I don't know how, but we'll take care of this. Okay, Mr. Steele. I'm on my way. 24 hours. Newtown was still going to open, and all those people with all those Theas were going to spill out and change everything. I grabbed the most important-looking things I could find in Ramsey's bag and prepared myself to go, and I told myself I wasn't going to look at him again told myself to act like small fry, to think like the big guy, to only look back to ensure we had not come this way before. Because the old man wasn't really dead. His body was, but months ago he told me himself that a body's not worth much. When he said to me, what we do, what we make, that stays. Ramsey's wouldn't be gone, truly gone, until that countdown had stopped, until every Thea soul had been deactivated, until everything he made was gone. I kept telling myself I wasn't going to look back. As I turned out the light, as I opened the door, as I looked back at his borrowed face, lit softly by the nighttime glow of the city he made. It looked like he was moving for a second. But the life wasn't in his body anymore. It was in Newtown. The shining city of his own design. If you've enjoyed this tale, please consider donating to the Penumbra on Patreon. Our artists work tirelessly to bring you these stories, and if you have the means, we hope you will support our efforts. Every dollar helps. You can find that page at patreon.com slash the Penumbra podcast. If you support us on Patreon at a $10 level or higher, you will receive access to commentary tracks like this one from co-creators Sophie Kainer and Kevin Vibert and actor Matthew Zonzinger. Everyone saw this to Ramses and Juno and the entire audience that everything is leading up to the final confrontation. Yep. And, you know, like, what is going on with Newtown and, like, this final showdown. It's so obvious that this is how it goes. Yep. And one day I sort of, like, sat bolt upright and I was like, what if it didn't? What if he just dies? Kevin was like, why? Why would he die? I was like, he's old! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I know that. You can also support The Penumbra by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter at The Penumbra Pod, following us on Tumblr at The Penumbra Podcast, telling your friends about us, telling your friends to tell their friends about us, and especially by rating and reviewing our podcast on iTunes. Every rating, comment, and kind word spreads our stories further and inspires us to keep creating more and better tales to come. We would like to give special thanks to all who support us on Patreon, but especially to Minchowski, Aurora Seer, Demi Prince, Camille Blanton, Ota Arcana, Christine Kim, Rowan Collins, Garrett M, Jay Yanazelli, Karen ZH, Fiona Parker, Reagan, Co, Kim Zygen, Aetha Lang, Charlie Spiegel, and Jamie Gunter for their incredibly generous contributions per episode. Thank you. Did you know that the Penumbra has merchandise for sale? It's true. The Penumbra has partnered with DFTBA to bring you the posters, shirts, and pins your heart desires. Just go to dftba.com and search for the Penumbra Podcast. This tale, Juno Steele and the Man of the Future, was told by the following people. Joshua Elon as Juno Steele, Matthew Zonzinger as Ramses O'Flaherty, 
Kate Jones as Rita, Stefano Perdi as Mick Mercury, and Sophie Kaner as the Thea. The Penumbra is created and produced by Sophie Kaner and Kevin Vibert. If you wish to know more about our ever-expanding, infinitely creative team of artists, musicians, editors, designers, and managers, you can read about them in the show notes of this episode. I'm afraid this is the end of the line for today, dear traveler. We hope you will ride with the Penumbra again soon.